Hello, YouTubers, friends, and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. We are on June 12th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well as earthquakes, volcanoes, and space weather. And space weather starting out here. 304 angstroms. We did have quite a large plasma filament eruption coming from the northern hemisphere. Watch that dark land region lift away. Other than that, only moderate C-class solar flares detected today. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming. No major sunspots cresting in, but pretty complex sunspot region in the southern hemisphere that is developing in the last few frames there. Looking at outgoing here, this is where we saw most of the C-class solar flares. Most notable there on the right-hand side. And as well, left-hand side with that plasma filament eruption. A closer look at it here as the plasma filament was stretched across the surface of the northern hemisphere and decided to lift away and created a massive tsunami on the sun after that and as well producing a CME in a northern fashion. Plasma filaments still interacting with it and as well a fiery little flash here c-class solar flare coming from one of the six sunspot regions on our surface looking at multi-spectrum you can really see that plasma filament eruption and smack back into the surface of the sun creating what i what we would call a massive tsunami on the sun amazing images here and thank you so much for tuning in no major space weather events have been thwarted our way, but we do have some incoming space weather and we're being affected by moderate right now. Just amazing. In this image, you can really see that plasma filament tsunami. Here's a look at another graph. This is where our sunspot regions are. And there are six of them. And as well, that little grouping is gonna be a bit of a concern in the future. Space weather conditions, nothing major to talk about solar x-ray flux remains in a heightened sea range just recently seeing a pretty big spike there seeing about a dozen c-class solar flares in the past 24 hours geomagnetic activity sitting at kp2 could be up to about three overnight real-time solar wind 450 kilometers per second after being jacked up to about 500 or 485 kilometers per second and this started in last night's update where the solar winds were increasing. They were extremely low there for a couple days. ISPA space prediction spiral still only showing the CME taking off towards Venus. The little yellow circle is our planet Earth with all of our sun's energy. Having a look at the DRAP absorption map showing the last six hours of cosmic rays and energy penetrating our magnetosphere. Big flash there over East Pacific. Lasco 2 showing the last 48 hours of imagery. Brought to you by Soho. We did have that sun diving comet yesterday. But then look in that last frame there. You can see that plasma filament ripping from the northern hemisphere. And a very dense one at that. Sun Diver, and then all of a sudden, whap, that plasma filament finally destabilizes and lifts away. Let's have a closer look at all this energy leaving our sun right from the northern hemisphere. Large plasma filament has been snaking around there for the last few days. This is what I was talking about in the last few episodes. Let's keep an eye on them as they do either slap back into the surface or rip away and sometimes in an Earth direction. So it's all about staying aware and prepared. Let's have a look at earthquakes for the past 24 hours when we are extremely low, sitting at about 150 earthquakes in the 24 hour period, extremely low. So heads up everybody, something is a brewing. Having a look over United States, Chalice, Idaho reporting a 3.7, largest across the region as well, Oregon with a 3.0. As you can see here, USGS reporting 150 earthquakes in a 24-hour period. Lots of minor activity bouncing 
between California and Alaska right now. Notable earthquake there in New Brunswick, Canada, 2.0 magnitude. And as well, notable earthquakes north northwest of Yellowstone, minor activity. And as well, notable 3.7 Chalice, Idaho, towards the Salmon Mountains. And that is the last 24 hours. Really low numbers. Largest through Alaska was the 5.0 yesterday. Largest 24-hour period was the 6.2 in Japan. Still seeing residual 4.6s to 4.9s right across Indonesia into Krakatoa. And then we saw a pretty deep earthquake here, Fiji region, 4.5 magnitude at 607 kilometer depth. So expecting a larger shallower earthquake to follow. And with this extremely low numbers for earthquakes right now on USGS and the quiet zone, South America, Central America, something's up. A lot of pressure is being released in the middle of the Pacific with the Kilauea eruption. Not reporting many earthquakes today as pressure has been released. Looking at the last, this was June 8th to 11th. And then 12th into, or sorry, 11th into the 12th. As it seems to be dropping, but still very active a lava lake. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Something's got to give right across the Pacific here. Philippines, Indonesia, possibly even up into the Cascades. Maybe a new eruption through Java region. But we're definitely under a lot of pressure right now. Having a look at the last seven days for shakers across the planet. Just to get an understanding of what our planet goes through on a daily period. And most times we are at about 200 earthquakes reported by USGS. Right now we're sitting at 150. And this is the last seven days Interesting activity on both sides of the Antarctic plate right now and as well all across the Ring of Fire. Earth changes and always has been. Stay aware and prepared. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing most recent satellite imagery and as well most recent volcanoes. Got Popo and Mexico. Many, 250 active hazards right now Many are floods and fires, of course, across Canada, as we still have an active 250. We've got Fuego, Guatemala, Sabancaya, and Peru. Boy, it's just, right now, we're going to have to get to a volcanic activity report. But having a look at satellite imagery, large atmospheric river spinning into a, or stretching into a large low-pressure system going towards Antarctica. Southern Hemisphere ramping up multiple lows across the Atlantic right now and as well through North America, finally getting some relief and a cool down. And as well, low pressure system off the coast of France, Spain, overlooking the Pacific, got the same kind of thing happening there. Atmospheric river stretching and racing straight up into Alaska. All this moisture coming out of Russia, stretching, or sorry, out of China, stretching straight across the Pacific. We also have tropical cyclone Gulak. And as well, Cyclone by Parjoy heading into northern India, northwestern India, lingering low pressure system over Turkey. Let's have a look at our air quality report as we have quite a bit of SO2 and particulates coming out of Alberta this week, coming out of Kamchatka, Kilauea, and as well, Guatemala, Fuego. And through Mexico with Popo. I'm pretty sure we're sitting at 50 active interrupting volcanoes across the world. 
Stay tuned for the volcanic activity report, give you a full report on all the active and erupting. Quick browse here at the rest of the world showing SO2 forecast. Stay safe, stay aware and prepared. Stay tuned to daily events worldwide. Having a look here, satellite imagery overlooking Alberta and northern BC. Just massive amounts of smoke and fires breaking out throughout the day. And all of that is set to head into parts of central Alberta and then move southward even into the United States. All bordering states with Canada will be affected by wildfire smoke here in the future. Low pressure system on the east helping fuel that down into the United States. But it's going to be some nasty air quality through Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba as all of this sweeps across the nation. Having a look at world weather forecast, low pressure systems affecting North America this week. Extreme weather could be prevalent throughout Alberta. Long range forecast in as well Saskatchewan. Intense low pressure system moving in by next Monday into Tuesday. And as well coastal regions, United States and the Atlantic provinces lingering lows for the week. Having a look over Europe, the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, and as well most of South America. Quick glance at world weather, everybody. There's only so much time in a video. And I thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the information shared here. Keeping humanity aware and prepared. Intense little cyclone here by Porjoy. We'll be making landfall through Karachi, India. And then into Jathpur. And it looks like it's going to sustain its eye and velocity right up into almost New Delhi. And then move eastward in the long range forecast. But still tons of moisture coming out of the Tibetan Plateau this week and then stretching straight across the Pacific. Atmospheric river affecting most of Alaska right now, but in the long range forecast that will be sweeping down the coast of BC. Leave it here looking at world weather, Southern Hemisphere towards Australia and New Zealand. Good night, everybody. Much love, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.